Good morning, everybody. Um, here we are on the second day of Kronos. Um, the first paper uh, looks extremely interesting. I look on with absolute horror at the idea of a new system of my known relative chronology, but um, nonetheless, uh, Paniotis, uh, sorry, the Amandis Paniotopoulos uh, will now talk on how feasible is a new system of my known relative chronology, the Amandis. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, also, good morning to our digital audience. I would like to thank very much uh, Jan and Tiziano for accepting the paper of a non-specialist in this conference. And I would like to uh, start immediately. So in uh, uh, the last 100 years, several generations of archaeologists working on uh, Minoan Crete have taken again and again traditional assumptions, contributing with their painstaking work and very innovative insights to a most dynamic development of our discipline, yet with a single exception, the system of relative chronology that was introduced no. Wait a minute. Ah. Okay. Ah, with the, okay, yes, thank you very much. The system of relative chronology that was introduced in 1906 by Arthur Evans and is still alive and kicking. The three questions which arise almost unavoidably from this impressive resilience of an old and perhaps even outdated concept and which I would like to address in this paper are why so? Here. Uh, with what consequences for the current research? And uh, the big question is whether there is a sensible alternative. Let's take first things first. What Arthur Evans presented in his 1906 paper was actually not a system of relative chronology, but a classification of pottery styles that had no sound stratigraphic confirmation. This confirmation um, came uh, uh, or followed only a couple of years later, and to be more specific, in 1913, with the sounds in the West Court, which Evans used as basis for compiling his idealized Gnosian section. Back in 1906, when Evans launched his rather conservative chronological system, a better alternative had already existed. His own father, John Evans, had presented already in 1850 a paper on the chronology of British coins, which is regarded as one of the pioneering attempts for seriation in the 19th century. The Egyptologist uh, Flinders Petrie, whose publications evidently helped Evans to build up his chronological system, was the first to employ the chronological to employ already in 1899 mathematical modeling in archaeology by using seriation for reconstructing the chronological sequence of Egyptian tombs. An astonishing achievement, both in terms of conception and implementation, which earned him the reputation of one of the greatest applied mathematicians in the 19th century. And despite this uh, intellectually vibrant environment, Evans chose to proceed much in the same way as Johann Joachim Winkelmann, who had published in 1764 his history of ancient art as a succession of styles. Evans was definitely not naive, but very pragmatic. He was convinced that Minoan ceramic wares merged into one another without any discernible breaks or changes. Therefore, he was much more interested in rendering this continuous development as a succession of styles, rather than defining the limits of clear-cut portions of historical time. He used diagnostic types for building a cultural chronology, yet he never tried to corroborate this data by quantifying them, as Petrie had already done in Egypt. Evans' system had and still has two basic strengths. The succession of styles as proposed by him was basically correct, and the system itself, due to its captivating symmetry, was easily to comprehend and to be absorbed by scholars and students. 
yet it had also some apparent weaknesses which resulted from several ill-defined phases and above all from their fuzzy upper and lower limits. The subsequent generation of archaeologists blindly adapted Evan's system of the Gnosian sequence and applied it to all other regions of this island, thus transforming the Gnosian to a Cretan chronology. And even if everybody could see that it was impossible that this rhythmic division corresponded in any way to the actual flow and breaks of historical time, nobody tried to replace it with a different system. Instead, Evan's chronology was preserved and perpetuated by means of uh, cosmetic corrections, uh, that means through an endless chain of interventions, including changes in the definition of individual phases or the introduction of several subdivisions, thus transforming the naive symmetry of the original tripartite structure into a patchy and dysfunctional whole. There has been only one attempt to introduce a different system undertaken by Nicolaus Platon, an endeavor that had, however, no true chronological, but rather a terminological impact, since Platon's definitions were adopted by the archaeological community as a very sensible alternative for uh, only naming the main periods of the Minoan cultural development. One should also mention Spiridon Marinatos, who in the 1960s started with Antoni Soy's assistance, compiling a corpus of Minoan pottery, an idea which would have been essential for a more systematic approach to the problem of Minoan chronology, yet unfortunately, this idea was never realized. So where do we stand today? Several serious problems still remain. The limits between the main periods of the system, uh, namely its major dividing lines, are fictitious and thus extremely irritating. Between the end of early Minoan and the beginning of middle Minoan period, or between the end of the middle Minoan and the beginning of late Minoan period, nothing happens, at least nothing which is archeologically tangible. Individual phases have been defined again and again anew. Numerous transitions, gaps and missing links, which result from the implementation of the Gnosian chronology all over Crete perplex the scholars. What we have is a giant with feet of clay, whereas the feet are the dividing lines of conventional periods that can float up and down because they lack sufficient stratigraphic confirmation. The current practice of dating a ceramic assemblage leaves quite often too much space for personal judgment and, is the, def and the definition of phases and subphases is often based on personal uh, criteria or arbitrary criteria. I mean that it differs from specialist to specialist. Another serious <clears throat> problem is the tendency to essentialize Evan ceramic periods, which, as we all know, do not really exist because they are nothing else than conventions. This tendency goes so far as to try to adapt the new, the few fixed stratigraphic points of our system to the ceramic periods rather than to operate the other way around. One example is the so-called post theran LM1A. Instead of using here the most solid fixed point of our chronology, namely Thera's volcanic eruption, as an anchor for the definition of this phase, for marking the limit, the lower limit of LM1A with it, we let it, we let this fixed point intentionally disappear in the troubled waters of a conventionally, conventional ceramic period. So what can we do now? One option would be to accept the system with its weaknesses, simply because we collectively agree that there is no better alternative which can offer us a more reliable and higher resolution perspective. In other words, we could declare, paraphrasing Winston Churchill's famous statement on democracy, <clears throat> that Evan's system is the worst form of unknown relative chronology, except for all those other forms that have been, have been tried from time to time or will be tried from time to time. 
This would be a rather convenient statement for all those who are not willing to step out of our current chronological comfort zone and revise a system which somehow works since 120 years. Therefore, I think that we have to put a more provocative question for increasing the awareness of our archaeological community towards the uh, urgent need for change. And this question would be, does the current system of Minoan relative chronology obscure important temporal variability and mask the actual temporalities of social, political, and cultural change that it seeks to inform? And if yes, is there any sensible alternative? I will start with the latter question and return to the first one towards the end of my paper. When talking about alternatives, the first and strong candidate is seriation by the method of corresponding analysis. So seriation or CA, why not or why no? To the question whether seriation can help us when applied in the Minoan context, there is an apparent answer. Yes, but only at a local intra-site level. The main uncertainty of seriation or CA and I don't need to stress it here in front of this audience, is its unimodal character that forces us to correlate occurrence or frequency of different kinds of pottery only with time. The method is not capable to acknowledge and process the impact of society, culture, politics, economy, or praxeology in ancient culture. Yet all these factors could have heavily determined the composition of a pottery assemblage. And this methodological risk of seriation increases significantly when we extend our analytical scale at a supra-regional level. Yet, within a single site, we can exploit the full potential of this method and at the same time minimize methodological risks, provided that we carefully select appropriate units for observation by excluding mixed assemblages and by acknowledging depositional processes for seriating same with same. A criteria, of course, a site full of floor deposits with high percentage of complete vases is the ideal case for seriation. But if seriation or corresponding analysis can be used only at a micro level, then uh, we may gain a valuable complementary method to traditional stratigraphy, but we would still lack a comprehensive, comprehensive solution for a new system of Minoan relative chronology. So, is such a system feasible? As we all know, archaeological data rarely behave good enough for enabling a straightforward rearrangement in the course of a model solution. And this is true, especially in the case of Crete. What we see in Crete's political history across millennia, namely the unconditional resistance of Cretans against any attempt to bring the entire island under foreign rule applies also to an epistemological level. Crete's cultural history, especially in Minoan times, defies any attempt to be put into a theoretical or methodological straitjacket. So what can we do in the case of a culture in which regional diversity of its material manifestations renders a comprehensive ceramic chronology almost unrealistic? There can be only one viable way, not the application of an a priori existing model, but an a posteriori tailor-made solution that tries to cope with Cretan or Minoan idiosyncrasies. So the first, there are a lot of idiosyncrasies. I want to mention only two. The first is undoubtedly the geographical and cultural fragmentation of the island. So we have to acknowledge the possibility that the evolution of pottery styles in different parts of the island was characterized by different temporalities. This might explain problematic transitions, gaps, and missing links. Any new model solution needs to consider the evident ceramic regionalism on Crete. A further impeding factor results from the depositional processes of ceramic assemblages. A substantial percentage of pottery groups on which the current system of Minoan relative chronology is based are secondary deposits, namely fields. 
And in several cases, it's very likely that the pottery they contain came from rubbish disposal areas at the outskirts of the settlements, what diminishes even more their anyway limited chronological value. Taking this and of course other Cretan idiosyncrasies into consideration, a tailor-made solution for a new system of Minoan relative chronology should follow an incremental model with several steps or milestones that resemble phases or work streams which can be affected either simultaneously or sequentially. And I would like to uh, suggest five uh, such steps or milestones and uh, to show you a very uh, rudimentary project canvas of, such, uh, uh, such an, of how such an endeavor could look like. And let me start first, uh, first with steps two and three, because this refer to something which is already happening. Ceramic specialists working on Crete have already started to replace the monolithic Knossos centric sequence with a chronological system that reflects the regional diversity of the island. This method of sequencing and synchronization, has, which has been loosely described by Nicoletta Momigliano in the Knossos Pottery Handbook, includes following steps. First, identifying suitable ceramic deposits or clusters of relatively homogeneous ceramic groups. Second, working out the relative sequence. Third, relating these groups to the sequences of other Cretan sites. And then finally, attaching to these groups the labels of the Evan system. This is how our Italian colleagues have been working in the last decades in Pestos and also other excavators and specialists at major Cretan sites. And this collective work is a real breakthrough towards a new system of Minoan relative chronology. This ongoing work on the synchronization of local sequences could be enhanced by introducing um, the so-called marker horizons for temporal correlations, namely horizons of homogeneous ceramic assemblages throughout, throughout Crete. Marker horizons were an important tool of comparative stratigraphies extensively used, especially by German archaeologists in the study of European prehistory. For this crucial step of synchronizing local sequences to each other, we need without doubt, without any doubt, only reliable high quality data. The priority should be given to primary deposits, namely floor deposits uh, with a high percentage of complete vases. The reliability of such a temporal correlation of different Cretan sites to each other would significantly increase if the selection of the appropriate units would be guided by cultural parameters. What I mean uh, is that archaeologically detectable Minoan networks, namely really existing Minoan networks in the Bronze Age, connecting several sites to each other would be ideal as a basis for ceramic synchronism. If we overlook the hopeless situation with the prepalatial chronology, in which the limits of the periods and the periods themselves remain extreme, extremely blurred, we could focus for the protopalatial period on a so-called palatial triangle, including Knossos, Festos, Malia, and perhaps even Comos. <laughs> Uh, which has already provided a solid basis for synchronism. For the new palatial period, one could try to establish synchronism first among the sites of uh, the Knossian network, if I may use a very neutral term, uh, including, of course, Knossos, Galatas, Ayetriada, Psira, Gurnia, Moklos, Palekas, Rosakros, etc. For corroborating this synchronism based on stratigraphy and seriation, we could apply an integrative methodology by intercalibrating different types of chronological evidence. First and foremost, radiocarbon, but also other sets of data, such as nodules or cells. Nodules, identical seal impressions distributed on different sites, the so-called Knossian replica rings group, provide, quite theoretically, such a tool for sequencing. Since where traces, I saw you on the left, an example, this is my singing gold ring, and you see the where traces. 
Since wear traces or damages on the seal surface are visible as tiny protuberances on the seal impressions. Every seal impression with such wear traces is of course later than an identical one from a different site without wear traces. And I saw you here uh, one example from Sclavocampus. Yet much more promising seems to be sclerochronology, a method analogous to dendrochronology that examines the annual cell growth patterns. The potential of sclerochronology as a tool for sequencing became clear to me only after an ingenious comment by Tom Brogan following a recent lecture by Charlotte Pearson. Tom suggested that one could try to use the growth lines of cells from non settlements for synchronizing their context. And I think this would be a very worthwhile attempt. Now let us return to step one, which is the most basic and a self-evident prerequisite. Everything depends again on the quality of our data. One of the most serious weaknesses of traditional chronology has been the arbitrary way of dating ceramic assemblages and ceramic phases. What we desperately need as soon as possible is a taxonomy, a coherent and rigid classification system for Minoan pottery. I mean a well thought out concept of how to define types and subtypes according to formal or functional criteria or a combination of both. Using, if possible, shapes, words, or motifs with established temporal ranges, ranges and assigning them numbers. A coherent uh, stratification classification system would presuppose a standard protocol for studying pottery groups and a thesaurus of predefined pottery types and subtypes. Only in this way we can avoid risks and mistakes caused by fuzzy descriptions and attributions and the suggestive identification. This is what I think what uh, Colin called yesterday the impressionist approach. The fourth step would be to finally replace the labels of the Evan system with a refined version of the Platon system of chronology, which provides a more reliable framework for reconstructing Minoan historical sequence. This could be done by dividing the exceedingly long pre, proto, neo, and final palatial period in subphases, namely named by Arabic or Latin numbers. And these subphases would not need to be uh, symmetric. Um, with subphases, the upper and lower, lower limits of which will be archaeologically more tangible than the current divisions between, for example, uh, early Minoan 3 and middle Minoan 1a, or middle Minoan 3 and late Minoan 1a. And these subdivisions were already suggested by Platon uh, in his seminal paper. The subdivisions of the four periods should be related to architectural phases or to phases the, limit of, the limits of which are given by distraction horizons. We have to avoid the irritating practice of suggesting that distraction and rebuilding occur in the same ceramic phase, for example, as it has already uh, um, be done in the case of middle minor 3b. And the final step is one which would embrace all previous steps as stages of a holistic computational approach. The creation of a virtual research environment with collaborative workflow forming non-ceramic chronology. In other words, a matrix that will arrange the ceramic evidence with respect to data intersection and code it as a feature vector and apply machine learning algorithms for the computation of ceramic sequences. The development of a domain ontology for Minoan and relative chronology with annotated shapes, squares, and motifs could follow existing standards, for example, SIDOC CRM, which is uh, rather difficult, or something completely new, a spatio-temporal network model, which uh, with modern algorithm and computing power could facilitate a reliable temporal correlation of uh, layers from different settlements to each other. The great potential that digital tool possess today could offer the possibility of uh, democratizing this endeavor. By creating a scientific communication infrastructure, the challenge to establish and use a new system of relative chronology 
would not be left to the hands of a few specialists, but could involve the entire discipline through an open source and continuously updatable research matrix. Every excavator, ceramic specialist or scholar could be provided not only with free access for using this uh, virtual research environment, but also with a curated access for feeding it with new data. Let me return at the end of my paper to the question about whether the current system obscures temporal variability. I'm afraid that the answer is yes, especially at the most critical stages of the Menon cultural trajectory, the ends of the protopalatial and the neopalatial periods. Almost 120 years after the birth of this old system, the time is ripe to revise it by employing a system of interlinked regional sequences, which might be corroborated by mathematical modeling and computational methods. We can begin to move beyond essentialized periodizations that rarely reflect the realities of the archaeological record or the historical trajectories of the social, political, and cultural phenomena. As we all know, pottery as a chronological tool is a means to an end. And this end is, as Peter Warren and more recently Carl Nappert have stressed, not a chronological, but an utterly historical one. The urge to replace the monolithic Gnosian system with a dense network of reliable regional sequences is not just for acquiring a better graphic depiction of cultural change, but for elucidating the temporal and perhaps even the causal relationship between events and processes that left archaeological traces. What is thus at stake by introducing a new system of ceramic chronology is not the ability to classify a vase in a specific ceramic period or to date it more precisely, but the urge to acquire the sharpest possible analytical lens for looking at Minoan history. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, Dear Mendes. I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, questions about this. I mean, uh, looking at your five points, um, uh, clearly one of the most interesting is number five, creating a virtual uh, research environment and an exchange of information. Um, but jumping back to your number one, compiling a taxonomy of my known pottery. Um, I mean, clearly, various people have tried to do this um, at times. Um, I remember one of the first attempts to give uh, standard names to shapes um, actually was uh, done by Lefteris Platon at the San Cross. Um, um, and then in terms of pottery studies, Gisela Bulbo tried to put Camaro Square into a very formal um order, as it were, which uh, I would say has largely been rejected. Uh, so that, that is actually a very difficult one to start with, and but requires number five in terms of sharing information to get to number one, if you understand what I mean. But uh, no, the whole thing is, is very interesting what you're saying. Certainly the faults um, of the monolithic Knossian system um, are, you, you make them uh, clear, and I think that um, not only Nicolas Momigliano in the, the edition of the Knossos uh, Pottery Handbook, but um, starting in, I suppose, the late 80s, early uh, 90s, when um, at Knossos pottery groups were um, started to be defined, uh, so that when we had actually had a seminar in the Stratigraphical Museum at Knossos, the idea was to define pottery groups, put them in order before giving them any mm. evidence later. Mm. So they're all, all these things. I think a lot of people are aware of what you're talking about and uh, respect very much what uh, you're trying to do. Um, and well, let's see where it goes. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you very much. May I answer? Well, th th thank you very much. This is a very encouraging comment. And I think you. Uh, you address uh, one of the weaknesses of this uh, endeavor, which is, of course, a high risk, high gain attempt uh, without any 
uh, a certainty that uh, it will be successful. And I think um, one should start uh, with uh, the most uh, solid evidence. Kamara Spotter is a huge silence. And any attempt to uh, introduce an ontology is, of course, an attempt uh, not to understand or uh, record the ancient cultural patterns. Uh, it will be impossible with the taxonomy to grasp uh, uh, the variety of uh, uh, my, my non pottery production, but it's just a tool for approaching um, this uh, huge body of evidence, which is purely conventional. Yes. I, I agree. Um, one of the problems is uh, what you mentioned halfway through your talk is that um, the Crete's cultural history defies uh, all the kind of things that you actually would like it to um, uh, conform to. Whereas, uh, yes. I mean, the only exception would be Mycenaean mainland, let's say. Mycenaean pottery, uh, let's say, is, is much easier to define, which is why Gisela Wahlberg's attempt at Camaras didn't work. And it says something about the character of Crete throughout its prehistory and modern history um, that it, it presents even more difficulties than uh, many other places. Yes, I, it, uh, I, indeed. Shall I <laughs> yes. ask for other questions? I'm not going to hog the microphone. Oh, here they are, right. Okay. Let's <laughs> <laughs> start with that. Uh, uh, no, no. Um, sorry, get the microphone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very encouraging. Thank you very much. I'd like to encourage you to minor critic, critical points. CA is, is very seldom used for chronological purposes only by archaeologists. Otherwise, just about every social community in the world is using it. It's, and that's sort of what fortifies your statement that we can use it for the particular. Way. It depends how you define your variables. Right. Your networking was very <clears throat> um, motivating. And the second point I would like to encourage and criticize at the same time is that you mentioned that we have a lot of rubbish deposits. And the RC is wonderful for working with that. And I got myself a lot of criticism in Troy because I was running correspondence analysis over what everybody called Schliemann dump. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It had been, I, in my terminology, dumped in prehistoric times. Schliemann had taken it and redumped it. And the chronological resolution was the same as the recently newly excavated finds. Perhaps I'm exaggerating a slight amount, but um, altogether the problem is that for not the application of sort of statistical procedures. Don't forget, I'm 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 very aware that I'm really dependent the impressionistic thinking is much much more refined. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it can be useful, especially for rubbish dumps. It has the same power of resolution, the day two resolution, as normal. Uh, deposits have, and the problem is not the statistical applications to convince your colleagues of what they're doing sensible. Because yeah. if the if the Schumann dam has the same resolution as, it's difficult to conceptualize why why we should why we should invest all this work in excavating every single shell. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, again I agree. I just want to. Uh, raise our sensitivity against uh, the problems uh, related with the uh, uh, fields or uh, dam. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I like the calls. Uh, thank you very much, Yamantis. I like uh, the idea. And I dealt with the same problem um, when we are talking about prehistoric cultures in Europe. So um, a solution would be that we talk from now on only in absolute dates. And we will come to that point, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting as well is that parting our approach with this time horizons. But, and now comes the big but, so how to deal with that would be really interested. What do you think about this? To deal with this, yeah, let's call it iconic, Chronological systems. It's just a um, yeah, mental um, problem, so uh, memorizing things. Because not only the Evans chronology for Gnosis, it, 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 below, uh, it, it applies also for, for Europe. For instance, Montelius with this Nordic Bronze Age chronological system or the Reinicke system, they are so well established in the archaeological community. 
uh, that it's hardly impossible to replace them, except that you have an alternative concept which is in the same way memorizable, like this early, middle, late, and this subdivision. So that's the problem with what I see, and I would be happy to have an escape from that box. Well, uh, thank you very much. I add it already as this suggestion. It must be user friendly, which is, of course, a challenge. Uh, and I, I fully agree. Uh, but I would say, first, uh, it is essential for all those working in the gene to solve uh, the, problems, the problem with their own chronology and then start thinking about uh, uh, the, the impact uh, uh, which a new system might have. Uh, to other culture but i see that the problem is there it has a new system has to be exactly as simple and understandable as uh, the evan system no doubt i agree thank you very much Yaman, this was very nice interesting paper and uh, with uh, showing us potential actually this is what i would really much like to do if i'm allowed by the system eventually and and um, <laughs> the thing is that uh, my non my non archaeology and uh, the evil systems have an ontology on their own you know that, that's the thing and it's very it's it has been proven to be very resilient Mm -hmm. and terminology and ecosystem as we keep doing it and, and looking at the pots and the relative chronologies and it's also being used a lot from the mainland from other parts of the Aegean so I imagine it uh, eventually being a large very large ERC project and you would have you would have one would have to have external collaborators going to different sites mm -hmm. and evaluating the relative sequences yes this is how it eventually should be done because it cannot be done by different separate people because of the um, of the things that you mentioned, our mm. subjectivity, our, yes. our uh, subjectivity interfering. And so I imagine there would be some people, there should be some people who know very well the material, the pottery, who will need to go to separate sites and evaluate in order to create all this inter site relative relativity. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing that you mentioned, which is very interesting, is um, what do you think about exactly the methodology of excavating? Because we produced, you, you in fact proposed a methodology for excavating when you said that when there is a destruction horizon, we should put different um, uh, uh, terms. We should we should divide this. We should not divide. Uh, that we should divide the destruction horizon in uh, if we have destruction horizons, it's not allowed to use the same phase. If, if I'm not yes, wrong, yes, so it's an also, also a matter of methodology that you are proposing mm -hmm. for excavating sites. Yes, thank you very much. This is very, very interesting. Yes, just a brief comment. Uh, everything starts already in the excavation interpretation. Uh, takes place at the trowel's edge, as uh, Hodder said. So you have already uh, to use in the excavation a standardized protocol, as the osteoarchaeologists already do uh, in the Aegean, for uh, ensuring that uh, uh, this process of documentation is objective and not suggestive. Salvatore. Uh, hello. Um, thank you very much for this uh, talk. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I, I had similar ideas at the very beginning of my career. Uh, I, I was talking about it with Jerry Ratter and Aladis on the mortal at that time, and they looked at me funny and they said, uh, you'll change your expectations as you go on in the and then I talked again about it something years later. I don't know if Walter remember. It was on, on a dinner a year again with Walter and Jerry. Uh, and I'm still a little bit stubborn uh, even now, some almost 20 years uh, later. I think there's a lot of good uh, in, in what you have said. And of course, it must be, uh, you know, lean against the background of re regional variability and specific, uh, specific cultural features that impact uh, some of the things like Colin was also saying before. 
But uh, to be realistic, okay, uh, if we want to go in this direction, as Iro was also pointing out, we need to start from the beginning. Uh, because in a system of uh, standardization, which I think is a good idea going uh, moving towards that protocol, we need to start from excavation practice, but also, uh, as you were pointing out for your talk, by a classification and a terminological system that calls certain formation processes and deposits in a certain way, and others in another way. So it's a collective uh, process, which I think also, if you think about it, it goes back also to legal points, because this would mean sharing a number of things and a number of elements that are about the current way of permitting, et cetera. And I'm all in favor of that, but we have to consider all realistically all the all the all the points in this. It would be a big cultural change, and I think that people can work their way through that. But we need to understand the complexity of this. And a very last thing to say: uh, it doesn't really matter to uh, really agree on how we call one shape because we can put numbers on that. Mm -hmm. But we need to have a database-like system, which many of us already work with, where however we decide to call or to number a thing, we try as much as possible to call the same thing uh, in only one way and not in a descriptive way in two or three for different uh, terminology that instead indicate the same thing. So it's a huge process and I think it, we could move towards that, but we need to be realistic in the timing and in the expectations that we have, and maybe objectivity is a bit too much of a word, I think. Only a very brief comment on that. I will start with the legal points. Uh, in uh, the 21st century, uh, this uh, uh, a basic boundary between published and unpublished data will be uplifted. It will be uplifted in the next years uh, with the digital repositories, which will create a totally new way of uh, dealing with hot data, data which will be changing uh, continuously. So uh, just forget uh, in the next years uh, this traditional uh, divide between published and unpublished data. It will be outdated. And the second, uh, to be realistic, I, I want to be realistic because nothing uh, counts, but only a result. And what I was presenting here is based also on our experience with the work uh, uh, on the corpus of Minoan and Mycenaean seals, which did something similar in the next uh, in the last 50 years, namely providing a curated access uh, to all excavators and giving them the possibility to participate in a very democratic process, but a curated. Uh, access with uh, introducing standardized protocols and descriptions and also taxonomy uh, for a very uh, 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 large class of uh, artifacts. Uh, now we must move on, yes. but I'm, I'm going to allow one more question from Irini Kapulu. Very short, please, Irini, sorry uh, to uh, push you like this. Off you go. Yes, uh, just very briefly. Um... The Amandis, I think what you are describing, and I think Hiro and Salvatore will agree with me, for people working inside, outside Crete, that's what we do, because we don't have the anchor points that uh, we are forced somehow to use in Crete. So everyone knows what Ayerini 5 or 6 is in the Aegean, mm -hmm. and we are forced to seek imports from Crete to tie our sequences, the side sequences to the Minoan system. So it is entirely possible to do it, of course, for, for Crete, because that's what we have been doing all our lives in other sites of Crete. So yes, thank you. I thank hope, you. yes, this will go well. Thank you, <laughs> thank, thank, you. you. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next paper. Okay. The next paper, ah, right. Uh, 